Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Two Geeks Talking is an entertainment industry interview show where we interview the creative people from the comic, film, TV, movie, and video game industry. And of course, I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. She has been on the show before, and it has been a very long time since she was last on the show. She is, of course, the uh, author and creator of the amazing comic, Mystic Revolution. But we are joined today by the ever-talented Jen Brazos. How are you doing today, Jen? doing great thank you guys so much for having oh yeah it's been way too long <laughs> i mean i don't know where you've hidden yourself but from what i've seen uh, online you've done a lot of great stuff since mystic revolutions uh, concluded uh, yeah i uh, i still feel bad that like i didn't give it a good like send off and you know again it is very much my hope that like revisit the project and but it's like it's one of those things where like when I started it I was just finishing up high school and then I sort of grew as a person I sort of reached a point where like I had been working on it so long I had gotten so burnt out and I just like, couldn't concentrate on putting out content anymore so I just I had to like be like okay I need to stop this and recharge and reassess and like figure out what I want to do and all of that yeah overall it's been better for me. So I started a clothing line, which has been wow. awesome. I've been doing artwork for tabletop games, both in uh, graphic design and illustrations. And that has been amazing and super rewarding and super fulfilling. I'm just a huge nerd for role-playing games. And definitely Mystic Rev was my attempt to make that perfect role-playing game that I would want to play with all of the crazy things that I enjoy. Um, so, you know, <laughs> that was super, super great. Yeah, and then I've, I've just gotten really into the online streaming community, and it's been so much fun, and everybody is so welcoming, so that's been super, super great. I mean, streaming has, has exploded, mm -hmm. not only because of the pandemic, but in general, yeah. in the past five, ten years, it's been amazing. The, the technology has improved, mm -hmm. the content, the quality of content is incredible as well, too. Um, I've never been a, a tabletop RPG or whatsoever. It's not because of, you know, not not trying to say my geek cred is, is horrible or anything like that, but, but it's not something I've ever had a chance to really do. So can you explain what makes tabletop RPG so uh, amazing and fun to get into? Well, so first of all, ultimately what's really great is that you're playing in this collaborative experience with uh, your friends or, you know, with your new friends, uh, because that's the other really cool thing is it is very much a hobby where you can meet new people, get thrown into a situation and become bonded without the usual social contraptions of like, ah, small talk, what do I say here? What do I do? How do I people, uh, when you're thrown into a dungeon and, you know, you need the cleric to heal you, like, you're just looking at the guy across from you and you don't, you know, yeah, I've never met you before, but I need you to save my life right now, buddy. Like, you horn to your god and you give, give me that straight line of healing. Um, <laughs> So my tabletop journey is very, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's, I guess I should say, uh, in how it's evolved. So I started playing, we want to go way, way back. Uh, my first technical tabletop experience would have been like Baldur's Gate 2, which is still my favorite video game of all time. So I'm playing this game when I'm like 10 or something like that. Cause it's, and Baldur's Gate 2 uh, definitely had like the huge, like a huge influence on Mystic Rev for those who played the game. like. There's references to it, like, littered throughout the comic. Because um, I think I found it through Mega Tokyo back in the day, which is crazy. Like, that shows you how old. Uh, all, and I'm dating myself completely. So I started playing it when I was really young. Baldur's Gate is based on Dungeons and & Dragons, and that got me really interested in learning more about the world. Especially since with Dungeons and & Dragons and, you know, all tabletop games, it allows you to make a character to exist in this world and setting and then play out that experience and have the characters grow and develop. So I found, you know, um, a group of my friends um, in high school who were very interested in playing it. I did some 
um, online uh, role play in like messenger groups or forums or whatever. Because again, this is the days of the ye old early internet with AOL Instant Messenger. That's dead now. It's so weird. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so we did that. We had so much fun. And again, we had just ridiculous, terrible adventures. But it was really cool because, you know, you share these epic stories with your friends about, you know, how you overthrew some evil dictator. And it really, like, activates that part of your creative side. I think there's just that, that need as humans to to have those crazy fun bonding experiences because when you think about like hanging out with your friend at a bar or you know somebody's party or whatever where it's like after all of the adventures of the the main event has concluded and you're just chilling around bullshitting the stories you're sharing are of those epic moments together, right? You know, hey, remember that time you just rolled up to that girl and got her number instantly? Like, those are the moments that you remember. And it's the same thing with any sort of role-playing game. I got very much into the live-action role-play uh, like a few years ago, which is where you dress up and, you know, um, it's way more of an improv theater experience because I've also just been a huge theater nerd forever. The big joke about uh, the people who play Vampire the Masquerade is uh, when we're going to like the after game events where we're all chilling in a bar or, you know, a Buffalo Wild Wings or a Denny's or whatever, <laughs> just hanging out after playing vampire games is inevitably the conversation is just like, hey, remember when you killed that mother? <laughs> that was so cool. Yeah, you stabbed him like 34 times and it's just like somebody is going to hear this conversation I wonder <laughs> <laughs> and that I think was is kind of interesting because while I was playing uh, while I was doing Mystic I was so busy most of the time between school and the comic that I was kind of working like almost 24-7 <laughs> like not quite but like that I had uh, insomnia like uh, oh, actual yeah. proper insomnia. So I just wasn't sleeping most of the time either. <laughs> and as you can imagine, like all of that just built up into a terrible thing. So yeah, so basically um, I wasn't I, I wasn't getting necessarily that outlet being able to tell my own stories just for fun um, because Mystic Rev was also my job. Um, <laughs> so it was definitely a thing that I really missed but I, I have been so happy to get back. I realized how much I needed having that creative outlet where it's like, this is something I do to tell stories for fun, but is it my job? Um, I love very much doing the Twitch thing because I've gotten really into doing the costuming elements uh, of it. I never thought I would ever be good at makeup or or good at like dressing up or anything for those people i assure you that you can definitely like anybody can learn to cosplay anybody can learn makeup uh it's just time and practice and just that desire to to try new things and experiment and get better it's so good and so rewarding and so much fun see yourself as someone else is so much fun <laughs> Well, that, that's the one thing I've, I've always loved seeing because I, I've stopped into a few of your live streams as well, too. And, you know, it's been amazing. Like, that's that was, you know, great lighting, beautiful makeup, all this other stuff. But I think I actually saw you doing that in a live stream yeah. at one point. And it was just like the transformation from uh, your current amazing self to your fantastical amazing self is, is really a, incredible to see. And... It's got to be also empowering the sense that, you know, you're you're physically coming into another person in essence. It's so cool. Um, so, like, I, I love doing the makeup streams, too. Um, I mean, I need to figure out a better way to do them, um, honestly, because I, I was just using Facebook and my phone. And ideally, I want to use it with my proper stream setup because you can see a good quality web camera <laughs> and, like, the sound is nice. <laughs> um, uh, so sooner or later, I'll figure out how to do, uh, do it better that way. It's very much me just openly admitting like yeah i don't really know 
doing? We're like, let's see what happens if I do this. Oh, that's cool. Like, like Bob Ross, but with swearing, you know? That's, yeah. that's how I describe my makeup strips. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a happy little shading. Happy little shading. Yeah, yeah, right? Just like, eh, fuck happens. <laughs> But this has also transitioned into, as you said, a, a clothing line as well, too, because you're taking your geek side, you're making it a business, which is great, and you're, you have some really cool t-shirt designs and other things as well, too. Uh, but did you ever think that when you were starting your comic uh, creation that you'd be into other geek culture and everything like that? I will say uh, wholeheartedly that, like, Part of the joy of making Mystic Rev and why there were so many characters and also like the tournament arc and stuff designing uh, costume designs and character outfits and stuff like that. Having the new excuses to draw new forms of, of clothing and outfits. And there will be a few times where I'd be like, oh, I don't like their outfit anymore. I'm going to give them a change. Ha <laughs> ha. Mm. When I was doing Mystic Rev, like I had said, I was coming off of high school um, and going into college uh, for art school. I reached a point where um, the tournament arc started, I believe, like just as I was like either leaving school or like, you know, in my final few years or something like that. So I had grown a lot as an artist and I really wanted to do updates to the character designs but in a cool and organic way one of the careers i had toyed with was being a concept artist it is a lot of work to be a concept artist and also like most of the time you're just doing like environmental design and i don't really have any interest in that what i love about clothing is that like that's the part that excites me and the part that i think is fun and just being able to have my artwork be something that people can wear um, and get excited about and share with their friends and family like that's the other cool thing is at this point I've been doing t-shirts and you know we're branching out into other types of clothing I sent you some pictures of um, the dresses we've designed at this point because I've been doing it so long like I get families who have their kids come up uh, to get new shirts because it's like we've been buying your shirts when we just started and it's their turn to have their first Savage Sparrow t-shirt. And I'm like, oh, my heart. <laughs> it's so cool. And you have great designs, too. Thank I mean, you. the amount of social media presence you need to not only promote yourself, but to keep fresh and relevant and to keep people coming back is always a challenge uh, being a, a business owner. But at the end of the day, like webcomic artists are small business owners. And very much it's about in order to be successful, you have to like learn real fast, honestly, all of those skills of brand management, social media management. Like I am so impressed at the work that the kids coming out these days are doing with how active and prolific and just incredibly talented these these younger content creators are when we were coming up and it was very much just that sort of wild west you know cowboy atmosphere of like everybody like throwing darts at a board and hoping something will stick um and you know it is so cool to see how incredibly talented all of these people coming up are their quality of artwork um and story and products um and just the overall diversity of it all um it's so amazing and also i love love so much that web comics are they are being taken seriously as properties the lore olympus got picked up for a series if you're looking at the on the manhua side noblesse and tower of god were both korean web comics on webtoon not anime series and that's amazing like i haven't checked out noblesse but i i loved the tower of god uh anime they made it was so cool noblesse was a uh beautiful I mean, i've heard action and the the character development. oh awesome yeah because it's on my list because it's about like vampires right yeah okay yeah. cool yeah because it's like all political and crazy like i'm like oh that sounds awesome the, if the first five minutes don't grab you then i will be very shocked <laughs> I'm excited. I can't wait. Yeah, but I mean, but that's like what I'm saying though, is like, 
I feel like when we there was still very much that idea of like, oh, you're putting comics on the internet. That's a fad. <laughs> so it's so awesome. Like like I wish that that I could go back to some of you know the the people. And show them today of like, look, look, there are things and, and this is a real deal thing. Like, this is awesome. Because, yeah, it's just incredible how much more support there is for, um, you know, making a career that there not necessarily was, uh, you know, again, 10, 15 years ago. Pandemic, from a creative standpoint, you know, has that actually helped you creatively or has it kind of hindered your creative process? The pandemic was really awful for me uh, on a very personal level. Um, so basically, those not familiar, uh, uh, my mom is not a good person. About three years ago, I found out that she was uh, manipulating my grandmother, um, who was 98 years old. Um, to exploit her for money um so we had to go through this whole battle to essentially free my grandma uh from her custody and um uh so at the start of the pandemic we had been living there and things have been going or no for two years um and things have been going really well um but um at the start of the pandemic like that's when her health started taking that final decline um so it was kind of awful because um the uh week that the lockdown started uh was um the same week my grandmother was in the hospital for um a problem with her lungs uh basically she was on this medication where um it was kind of like this delicate balance where like regulated but like her lungs would fill with fluid if it got to you know but like you couldn't reduce it too much or it'd screw up something else um so you know it was at that that time where she was like look this is the last time i want to be in the hospital like please put me on hospice like i don't want to deal with this ever again and so i had to with that revelation at the same time of watching like my next three conventions cancel um and i just bought a ton of product to like also you know um get uh, uh for those conventions so I, um because i had expected to make a ton of money with conventions um and uh uh, so it was like having to deal with that while watching all of your uh, revenue go away in real time. It was just devastating. Um, and and I was just like, uh, but uh, it was a thing where I sort of, you know, um, like all of these situations really like uh when you have your back against the wall or your feet to the fire or whatever like it really sort of um tests your character as a person um and you um have to like find those reserves of strength within yourself and i'm full and very lucky that i have such amazing people around me who are so kind and so supportive um i ended up you know, doing a quick GoFundMe because I was just like, we don't have any money because all these shows have canceled and I'm in debt and I don't know. <laughs> um, and, you know, um, a bunch of my, my webcomic friends rallied and like provided, you know, links and everything like that. And it's, it was just, um, and I think honestly, like that's the biggest thing. Um, incredible was just how supportive the community was um in lifting everybody up um being artists creating these um you know uh uh links uh for each other um there's uh there was like a virtual artist alley that was created so that way everybody could share and um and you know still getting access to stuff um a bunch of people created virtual conventions and online events um uh the gen con community was so incredibly supportive 
um, and super wonderful in how they treated um, vendors and artists and everything like that. Um, so, you know, if you're looking for amazing um, I will never say a poor word about Gen Con. They are an incredible gaming convention. Um, please give them all of your love. Um, and, uh, yeah, um, so, you know, uh, uh, it was definitely a, a horrifying, harrowing, and just, you know, again, devastating experience in those early months, you know, weeks and months. Um, but, um, ultimately, you know, going through it, I got to a way better place. Um, and my grandmother did pass. Um, and that was heartbreaking and awful. We've created so many wonderful things and I, I want to think she'd be super proud with where we've come. Kind of my, my very loose roundabout thing. I hope that's like not too rambly. <laughs> uh, that's okay. No, and, and sorry for your, for her passing. Um, I'm sure she's in a, a better place for sure. Yeah. She um, was an incredible woman. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's it's the memories, the fond memories that you have is what keeps them alive in, in your hearts and minds. Mm -hmm. Creatively, uh, I definitely had to use my creative brain to work out. So that's kind of uh, partially how and why I got more into doing the streaming stuff um, and also more into doing, because um, I had done um, a handful of tape artwork for tabletop games like here and there so you know it's been kind of cool just sort of accidentally getting into the industry that way <laughs> like I didn't seek out to do it but I'm happy that I got it <laughs> if that makes sense um, uh, and and it's also it, it's great that your your passion for TTRPGs is, is turning into an when it comes to uh, you utilizing not only your your skill set of, of being an, a, a fantasy artist and a, and a traditional artist for that matter but you're also you know parting joy to the masses that love these types of genres as well too so it's it's great to see is there anything that i haven't touched on that you'd like to showcase or share with those um, please check out my super awesome website savagesparrow.com it's where you can find all of my super sweet and cool nerdy clothing apparel accessories uh we just came out last year with a line of uh, witchy inspired uh, stuff. Uh, there's a cute dress with pockets and the greatest blanket you will ever have. Like, holy heck, it is the most awesome. Also, uh, my Patreon is uh, also Savage Sparrow. If you're interested in following my artwork, you know, just toss me a buck once a month and you can see all of my posts. I've been posting um, the uh, uh, artwork I've been doing for uh, tabletop games, our Pathfinder games, and, you know, just whatever I'm working on, really. Um, so if anybody's ever curious about my artistic process or just wants to, like, you know, send me some love, that is the easiest and best way to do it. The last big project I worked on was the Mora Cinematic Gaming Solutions. It is a really cool book that uh, just got funded on Kickstarter, but you should be able to like pre-order it if you go to Mighty Narwhal. An awesome book where it's sort of like a hybrid between LARP and uh, tabletop in that you are, uh, the game master takes on the role of a director with the um, uh, players being like cast members. And the idea is where you're all working to tell awesome collaborative stories through the language of cinema. If you want to have your cool moment of firing two guns whilst flying through the air, this is the game for you. Uh, there are three genres, uh, Ravenswood Academy, which is sort of uh, Harry Potter meets a mystical realm, which is the you know ancient world of antiquity with myths and mythology and Punching Nazis, which is your Indiana Jones-esque pulp hero stuff. Uh, super great. Yeah, otherwise, uh, I stream on the Weave the Tale, Penny for a Tail network. Sunday nights, we do our Pathfinder game, where you can see me as the sea elf character in my little photo there. I also stream Star Trek, not every Monday, but most Mondays on the Rook and Rasp network. 
Um, and then, you know, yeah, I just do uh, streams on Weave the Tail whenever they uh, have spots for me. Might be running a Dune game because I am stoked about that book. Uh, and yeah, that's what I'm kind of working on right now. <laughs> Obviously, the, the official Dune trailer has been released. Um, what are your thoughts on it so far? Huh. Okay, so like when the first trailer came out, I was kind of like, I wasn't sold on this looks cool, but like, it seems like there's, you're just making it hyper serious and like, there's not really any joy or excitement because you're just in hyper serious, serious mode and that's fine. But like the, the appeal is very much that, um, uh, somebody had written that, uh, Dune is is like Star Wars, uh, but uh, if Star Wars didn't care about you, um, which is pretty accurate, but like, but also, you know, again, as any fan of Star Wars, and uh, if you have read Mystic Rev, um, you know I'm obsessed with Star Wars. Like, I have a fucking ninja Jedi for the love of everything. <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, so there are so many uh, things taken from Dune. When you can see the parallel is where where my happy place of Dune is. And this recent trailer, definitely, like, there's characterization, there's humor, there's inspiration, like, oh my god, when the Duke is just like, we are, we are House Atreides, I was like, ha, oh, chills, like, so good, I'm so excited. For those of you who like tabletop games, the Dune TTR, it is a gorgeous book, and you can tell there's so much love for the series in this property, it is awesome they did such a wonderful job and and i need to devour more of it because i want to run a game <laughs> <laughs> and uh, of course star wars is, is, has been creating so many amazing shows recently i mean mandalorian was was beautiful. bad batch recently just came out as my roommate has never seen clone wars or rebels huh? or any of the cartoons before so we're running him through clone wars the cartoon i am shocked i know he made as far as I hate these stupid lemurs. This is the worst. This is so forced and terrible. Oh my god. No, you gotta get past the Scottish space lemurs. Like <laughs> you you can do this, it's great, it's worth it, blah blah blah. And so like I I I am so happy that I get to be that person for him. Um, cause we we just made it to the two episodes after the uh space lemurs. God, this is great Star Wars. And I'm like, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that. It, it, it's just, I mean, they're going to keep creating some yeah. amazing stuff. I mean, uh, the Obi-Wan series, I think, is going to be incredible. Like, I can't wait to see that. I am uh, stoked about Ahsoka because, like, yes. oh, God. I was a huge nerd for uh, the Legends, uh, mm -hmm. specifically the original Expanded Universe. So uh, having Grand Admiral Thrawn brought into the current canon, Seeing that they actually did him incredible justice in the yes. Rebels cartoon uh, brings me great joy. Um, having uh, him uh, be coming to life with the Ahsoka show is just, uh, I cannot express in the English language how thrilled I am. This incredibly compelling uh, character who is one of Star Wars' greatest adversaries, mm -hmm. um, because that's what makes Star Wars compelling and cool, is like, they have the coolest villains. Um, uh, having him come to life and being a major part of the universe is just, oh, I'm so excited. And, and Ahsoka, as a character, has just such an incredible and compelling journey. What I think is interesting is like that the the trilogy, you know, needed to get away from Luke and the Skywalker stuff um, in order to grow and be successful and get new people. Um, and what I think is pretty awesome is that between um, Din of the Mandalorian and Ahsoka, um, you have two very different paths that are 
related and are just super awesome journeys for new people to follow and come into because you know again like the uh the sequel trilogy with ray and them um you know uh i overall like them but like it's it was very much more of a rehashing of the skywalker journey than necessarily something unique and original to those specific characters um, yeah. which is kind of a disservice to them because I, I thought that, you know, they are all really compelling characters that really deserve their own sort of unique than just sort of rehashing the safe path. <laughs> Admiral Thrawn, like, I remember reading the original yeah. novels, canon, but honestly... They were there's... at the time, before Disney. Yes. Even some of the Lando stories oh. that I read, too that character could be fleshed out in its own series and i wouldn't be surprised if they oh yeah they took glover yes um, yeah i think that they are making at least because i i heard the rumor that glover's coming back for something solo as a movie was wasn't bad yeah like i actually really really liked it um yeah. because i thought it was cool to see them you know again do something different okay. Star Wars heist movie basically yeah. um, and I thought that they did justice to uh, the character incredibly well um, you know I and that was another movie where like the trailers were just like not good um, so I had like the lowest expectations especially since you know like the guy playing uh, Han like just seemed miscast but then like you see him in the film and it's like oh my god this guy is brilliant because he's yeah. bringing Han Solo to life in a way that isn't a Harrison Ford impression and yeah. I was so appreciative of that because like I, I Star Trek the recent Star Trek movies for being action movies but like you know, they're not great Star Trek movies if that makes sense yeah. Um, and the problem, one of the problems that they have is that, like, some of the casting, for example, like, they're, they're good, but, like, you know, um, like, Bones, for instance, isn't really playing young Bones so much as he's doing an impression of Bones, you know what I mean? Like, 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 it's not a, it's a great impression, but he's not, like, like, I feel like, um, if you look at the difference with, um, and I can't remember the actress name because I'm bad, but, um, the woman who's playing Uhura, um, is, is very much doing her own take of Uhura without, you know, doing an impression of, you know, the original right. actress, which is super great. Or like, yeah. you know, um... Uh, oh God, uh, or the guy who is Shaun of the Dead, like same yeah. thing, like uh, Pen. Um, sorry. Uh... Yeah, I know it's terrible. Like I, I know these actors and actresses, and I, I I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll throw the image up. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, that person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Shaun of the Dead guy, like yeah. he is, he is very much doing, um, you know, uh, uh taking what makes Scotty and reinterpreting it in his own way to be, you know, um, this young character and doing it justice in that way. Um, and I just don't like Chris Pine as an actor and kind of feel like he's not playing young Kirk so much as Chris Pine. <laughs> I, I mean, he, he's, he's definitely not yeah. bad. I mean, but he has, he has the face for it. Yeah. And, and... Yeah. Like, like he has yeah. the attitude, like, but, but I just, I, he's just so unlikable in my opinion. Anyway, um, so that's my point is basically that um, Solo was incredible. I really hope, I'm sad that it didn't make the money planned because I really was invested in Kira and the stuff she was doing with Crimson Dawn. And again, I'm getting really nerdy with Star Wars here, but I love all of the Darth Maul Crimson Dawn stuff. And I want to know more about that. Um, and and so I, I hope that they follow up on some of those loose threads with other uh, media and everything, um, especially since um, Khaleesi, the mother of yeah. dragons, that actress. Amelia, Amelia Clark. Yes, yes, thank 
you. Uh, she will always be Khaleesi to me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 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 she's so complicated. And, mm-hmm. and, like, her story seemed really, really cool. Um, so, like, I was hoping that while you know, again, we know what happens to Han Solo and where he goes after that movie. We don't necessarily know where she's going, and it left that open. And there is a good gap for those people who have watched Clone Wars and Rebels that you know that there, you know, Darth Maul took over Mandalore, and then the Crimson Dawn was doing stuff, and then question mark, question mark, question mark, <laughs> he shows up in Rebels. <laughs> And like it's weird what happened there <laughs> everyone has one or two people that inspired them on their path to where they are today who was that for you huh. so I have a few inspirations uh, honestly I was hugely inspired by Gura who did Berserk um, and I have a, a tattoo uh, I don't know if you could see it, but like I got the brand because I'm just like I want to have I want to have this on my body. His work is so incredibly detailed. His lines are just gorgeous. Oh my god, I could just like study his pages for hours. And and it was definitely um, a thing where I I would just whenever I would get stuck or not be sure about what I wanted to do. Um, I would just study his comics um, to, like, look at, you know, for inspiration of just the ways that, like, he was just so technically brilliant. Um, and in, oh, my God. Um, uh, so definitely him. Um, uh, I guess, let me think. Uh, uh, the... Um, guy who did um, Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter Hunter, um, mm-hmm. and I, I I feel terrible because I'm just having a day where I can't remember names. Um, but uh, Hunter Hunter in particular for me is a comic that has the best world building um, because there are so many unique ideas and concepts and character designs in that series um, that are so compelling and so interesting. And again, it was just a thing where like, I, I was so inspired um, by how consistently creative he could be, even if um, he is also apparently notoriously lazy and just stops working for years on end because whatever, I'm a super rich manga artist, I can do what I want. Um, but like, Again, I just, I thought it was so profound how cool, um, um, and, and it was always just that source of inspiration for me. Um, otherwise, um, I, uh, uh, yeah, and then, um, Christina Strain, um, is, has been sort of a mentor figure in a way. Um, she was a colorist at Marvel for a while, and now she is. Um, super awesome TV writer and producer. Uh, if you uh, enjoyed Netflix Shadow and Bone, she uh, was one of the lead writers and developers on that, so definitely support her stuff. Um, she found her as a colorist for Runaways, um, and we became friends because I would just go to her booth and be like, coloring is amazing, how do I be like you? Um, and she taught me so many things and so many ways to play with color, um, that have, you know, like, and you can see in my comic that there is a noticeable shift in my coloring when I, uh, when I was just herp derping around, um, trying to, uh, uh, figure out, you know, how to do it. And then when I started taking pointers and lessons from her. Um, so yeah, please send her all of the love and support. She is an incredible person, um, and, uh, her writing is also really cool, and it's been just super great to see how her career has evolved. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the manga artist, I had to look it up as well, too, is, uh, Togashi Yoshihiro. Awesome! Okay, because I was like, it's a T name, and I don't want to embarrass myself by getting it horribly wrong. <laughs> From a professional standpoint, you have 
business. You have had a successful webcomic. You are a tabletop RPG artist, and you have done many works, and you're a LARPer, and you've done many stuff professionally in that regard. Do you consider yourself personally successful? Yes, in the sense that, you know, I have created a job where I can support myself and my family um, on what I do. And it is when you can turn your passions into a career, like that is a huge win. But I am also somebody who is just a very goal-oriented and, you know, competitive person. So I am driven by just, you know, continuing forward. So like, you know, yes, I feel proud of the stuff I've done, but like, I want to keep going and keep, you know, getting out there and keep doing stuff um, and exploring new stuff and doing new things. Um, because, uh, uh, and it's not, you know, like not out of the like, oh God, you know, I'm, I'm so lame or whatever, like that self doubt, self hate, whatever. Um, but more just because, like, that's the stuff that drives, makes me excited to keep doing what I do. <laughs> the reverse of success is failure. How do you deal with your failures? And ultimately, I look at it, I always try to uh, look for a reason. If a design doesn't sell or something to that effect, I will be like, okay, first of all, did I do my best for this specific thing? Okay. Like, yes, no, actively, is this a good design? And it's just the audience isn't there or the audience isn't ready for this or whatever. I try not to blame myself for something failing because that's a super easy hole to fall into. And again, shift it to that more positive thinking of, okay, well, what could I have done better? What could I have changed to have made this a success instead of a fail? And sometimes the answer is simply just like, oh, well, you know, this just didn't work out and that's okay. You are putting out um, an original creative work, like you all have to look at it from that perspective of like you have to be your biggest fan of what you're putting out otherwise you know when you have those days where the numbers aren't coming in you're gonna get down on yourself but like if you're making something that you can be proud of it's way easier to deal with that so I always look at it from that perspective just because the audience isn't there for it it doesn't mean that this is a bad thing or i've done something bad or i am bad and should feel bad the younger generation are looking at your work and they're becoming inspired to be creative in their own right whether it's being creative as an artist or as a dm or as uh, whatever they'd like how can they inspire the generation that follows them um honestly i think being open honest and accessible um because the biggest thing is that um, people are going to be starting out and stumbling um, because they don't know what they're doing. Um, and everybody has had somebody to who they look to as, you know, uh, for lack of a better word, an art senpai, um, to give them that advice of just like, hey, have you thought about you know, um, doing this or, hey, you know, if you post um, on social media on these days, uh, more reach or, hey, you know, maybe, um, you know, you should watch out because when you draw lines like that, that's a tangent and that doesn't look so as visually appealing, you know. Um, so everybody has those, has had somebody in their life um, creative um, advice to break through that whatever barrier or plateau or rut they were in. Um, I was telling you about, you know, again, my friendship with Christina Strain, um, who took that time as a professional colorist for Marvel to talk to me about, you know, like how to, like her tips and tricks of how to color. Um, so, you know, time um, anyone approaches me with like, hey, you know, um, I really like X, Y, or Z, like, how did you do that? Like, I answer them, um, you know, as honestly as I can, again, with the time I have for whatever the situation is, because it's important to pay that knowledge forward um, and to encourage people to grow and also to, um, 
you know, because I know that there is a portion of the community that thinks that, you know, like, oh, you got to hide your secrets or whatever. But it's, it is, you gain so much more from just being kind and compassionate and creating these ties with new people um, because there's so much more you can learn um, from them. Like, um, uh, I made a, a bunch of friends over the years with a lot of younger artists in the artist alley because that's something I do where I'll oh, your stuff is so cool. I'd like to be your friend. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and they've taught me of stuff of like how you know like uh the industry has changed um from their perspective um and it's all things that are really important to um you know again apart from just inspiring and encouraging the younger generation it stops you your in where you are as an artist um so you know definitely be open encouraging and you know make yourself accessible to like learn new things, teach new things, and make new friends. Well, I do hate to say this, Jen, but that ends this particular episode of Two Geeks Talk. Thank you so much for coming on the show. And you can see Jen's work, of course, on her website, savagesparrow.com, as well as check out her her amazing streams on Twitch as well. You, you should support her that way too. Yeah. And then t-shirts and burrito blankets and everything else like that on, yeah. on of course her website mm -hmm. too. but again thank you so much for coming on the show i really appreciate it oh i had you, so much fun <laughs> you of course find jen's past interviews on two geeks talking on our website two geeks talking.com that's the word two not the number two you can of course see it on our youtube channel youtube.com forward slash c forward slash tgt media and of course as i say every week everyone has a story to tell and it's up to me to help pull that out and thanks so much for listening and watching and tune in next week for another great interview on Two Geeks Talk. Hey all, Kurt Sasso here from Two Geeks Talking. If you like this video and these quick clips here, make sure you take a look at our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash TGT Media. Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe as well. Hit the bell to make sure you get notifications, of course, from videos like this here. Uh, thank you everyone for listening and watching over the years and keep listening and watching for new and exciting interviews with talented and creative people in the entertainment industry. I'm your host, Kurt Sasso. Thank you so much.